Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. Today we have the newly released Sauron. Sauron is a 3 cost, 3 power card that has the owner reveal ability remove the ability from all ongoing cards in your hand and deck. So unlike Mr. Negative, he impacts both, and that's because there's not really a whole lot of cards with negative ongoing effects. In total, we have Ebony Maw, we have Lizard, we have Typhoid Mary, and we have Red Skull. Technically, Electro counts, but if you remove his ongoing ability, it's going to remove his on reveal as well, and so then you're not going to get the extra energy, and so there's really no point to run Electro at that point. So for today's deck, there are a couple of ways to lean into Sauron. With this shell, with a, with a Shuri shell, typically you want a few ongoing cards to protect your big powerful resources that you're going to be throwing onto the board. That would look like your Cosmo or your Armor, but with this version to lean into Sauron, we have cut those, and we replace them with the fact that we are pushing a strong amount of power every single turn. So hopefully, even if the opponent Shang-Chi's one lane, we can outpace them in that three power play by playing another 15 power resource in another lane, and we just press on the gas as quick as possible, and we try not to let up as far as that tempo goes. So as far as the play lines in this list, you do have the standard Shuri into a double powered Red Skull into a Taskmaster, or Shuri into Red Skull into a, an Arnhem Zola, if you don't have those particular playlines, you could do the Shuri into a skip on five into a She-Hulk and a Taskmaster, or you could do Shuri into a Typhoid Mary, into an Ebony Maw and a Maximus and a Lizard on the last turn, and you're going to be pushing quite a bit of power across the board, and since those are cheaper resources, you can spread it out efficiently on that last turn. And so overall, the decklist feels pretty decent. It doesn't feel like this is a meta breaker, but it feels like it's an okay add, especially if you don't hit your Shuri, it gives you that backup play line of how do we remove those negative abilities. And if you don't have Shuri, you can replace Shuri with something like an Enchantress that will act to counteract those negative ongoing abilities and can counter some of your opponent's strong plays. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so first up we have Doc Hack. The first location is Strange Academy. We do get our Sauron to play on Curve. I think we play Iceman into Strange Academy. My hesitation with that play, if we draw into our Arnhem Zola and we want to go with the Arnhem Zola trigger at the end of the game, then we wouldn't be able to consistently know what was going to trigger because Iceman could move over into that lane that we're targeting the Red Skull into a, an Arnhem Zola, and it would mess up that guaranteed trigger. And so the vault opens up. I'm going to go ahead and play our Sauron into that location. That's going to take away the Red Skull's negative ability. If we eventually draw into our Ebony Maw, his ability's gone. Lizard, just some really good utilization. And then we do get the Shuri into the Red Skull, which is massive. That is going to be just about the most ideal play line we could get. Because now, even though he's 30 power, sometimes that eight power that he gives them back in return is enough for them to swing that location or find a way to swing that location. With this example in particular, I, I don't think that's the case because we're gonna have it locked behind the vault location, but it is a possibility that they can overpower the, the 30 power Red Skull, but without the ability, it makes it that much more difficult. And so we do have the Shuri, we do draw into Arnhem Zola, but we're not going to go the Arnhem Zola play path this game. We're going to go the Red Skull into the Taskmaster into just dropping a zero onto the board. Unless we draw into Ebony Maw, then we can do both of those. Uh, but the Red Skull is going to come down at a massive 30 power resource. I would snap, but I do want to see, I do want to let this one play out so that we can showcase Sauron in all of his glory. I think he's going to be a decent add. I don't think he is a meta breaker. I don't think his ability is the same caliber as Shuri. He he gives you some extra utility, but he's not going to create some insane play lines, and some games you're just not going to want to use him. But I do think he is a decent slot. I think he's much more versatile than something like a Sentry. And so let's go ahead and do the Taskmaster into the Zero. I'm going to do the Taskmaster into the Lechugia. Um, the only reason being, is if for some reason they do have a Shang-Chi, and they try to anticipate where we're dropping our big power. If they don't drop anything additional into the Strange Academy, we can swing that location. Whereas if we had the zero into Lechugia instead, that wouldn't be enough for us to find that win. Um, that's just a very slight possibility, especially with a destruction deck. It is most likely a death wave style. And so with that, we do find our first game, our first win. Once we had the Shuri into the Red Skull into the locked vault, at that point I would have snapped, 
but I do want to let the games play out so that you guys can see the combo trigger all the way throughout. All right, next up we have the specimen himself. Specimen. The first location is Titan, which does reduce the cost of our She-Hulk, but, but other than that, we don't get a lot of benefit from it. Now, we do get the Altar of Death, and unfortunately, that's not the path that we're playing today, but it will help us curve into some of our bigger combos. So we can sacrifice the Iceman, we get the additional two energy next turn, we disrupt their curve a little bit, and then next turn we're going to have five energy, so we could do an early Red Skull if we wanted to. Um, and then we do have the five cost Arnim Zola that will eventually be on the board. Now we don't have anything to cancel his ability after he's already out in play, but I think that's okay. I don't think we necessarily need to. We're going to go the Red Skull here. They could be going with a Galactus. Galactus is very, very common right now. They do use magic, so very interesting. I'm curious what they're running. Uh, Specimen is always running something different. This is actually, I think, the first time I've matched up against them. I feel kind of mean because we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be smashing with the big massive Red Skull. Uh, potentially a Taskmaster play. We could do the Typhoid Mary here into next turn doing the Taskmaster, or we could just do Sauron. Is this the best play? I don't know. We are gonna go with Sauron. I don't want the negative uh, ongoing ability from Typhoid Mary. So he does have Gambit. Hopefully it hits our specimen. Oh, that is unfortunate, my friend. You lost the 50-50 flip. And now we have the upside of having our Typhoid Mary, our Lizard, uh, just a lot of flexibility in the cards that we can play and how we can play them. So here I almost want to go Arnold Zola into the Red Skull to move him across the board, but that also takes away kind of a surprise factor at the end of the game. And so I think I'm going to go Typhoid Mary instead of the Arnold Zola here. That will give us a little bit of flexibility in how and where we can play those last turn resources. So he does come down with the Moon Girl. And now we have our Ebony Maw. So we could do a massive last turn play. Or do we even wait for the last turn? We could do Arnold Zola. We could then throw Ebony Maw into the left lane to help pad that stat over there. Uh, next turn, we could do something like a She-Hulk and a Lizard. Uh, because of Titan, that's going to reduce the cost of She-Hulk down to 5. We can do that along with the Lizard to push another 15 power. Um, so our, our aim or our goal is to just outpower in every way that we possibly can. And it does hit our Ebony Maw, which is okay. That's part of the reason I wanted to spread out the power was just in case they have a way to re-trigger Gambit. And they do have whatever they duplicated in their hand. They did discard with... They, with Gambit, they did discard their Absorbing Man. They can't do the Absorbing Man into the Odin to re-trigger Gambit again. I think we're going to invest heavily into the Titan location um, and just see if we can outpower in both left and mid. In mid, it may be... Oh my gosh, they have the they have the du duplicated Odin. Oh my gosh. And it does... Oh, find them the win. Oh no. We just got specimened. I'll see you guys in the highlight video later today. <laughs> Oh no, shoot. Just, you hate, you hate to see it. <laughs> All right, next up we have 10 Titans. The first location is the big house, which is decent for us, especially since we typically want to push some additional power with like an Arnim Zola, or we have some really strong below four cost cards in our Ebony Maw, our Maximus, that we can throw onto the board relatively early and relatively easily. We could sacrifice the zero, Next turn, that will give us five energy. We could do both Ebony Maw for the zero dot ability and then our Sauron. The Altar of Death is not really great for this type of archetype, but it is okay. We can push additional power over into that lane with an Arnim Zola, but we are seeing a lot of Galactus, and by taking out the Cosmo, we don't have that counter to the Galactus playline. We could just do both here, and then there's no reason to ramp up, right? We could do zero into Ebony Maw. Next turn, we can do a Sauron. Um, we might sacrifice the Sauron, depending on what we top deck into, to utilize that extra energy. So if they have a Killmonger, we're we're out in the open. We are very vulnerable to Killmonger plays. They do sacrifice a Psylocke. I can only imagine that the Galactus play is coming down here. Our only hope is that we're going to ramp into a Shuri next turn. We're going to remove the negative abilities of all of our ongoing cards. We have our Typhoid Mary, our Red Skull. We might even be able to do a last turn She-Hulk into a Taskmaster since we will have the double power from Shuri. And hopefully with that, we can avoid uh, having priority against a Shang-Chi or against the Galactus playline. And so they do go Galactus as long as they don't have a Spider-Man lockdown. I think we can utilize this and I think we can still find a win. And so they do, <laughs> they do snap. We're going to go ahead and let it play out. 
the Shuri, Shuri actually makes it a 50-50 flip of if we have priority or not. We're going to play the Shuri. We will be able to skip on turn five. We're hoping and digging for the Taskmaster because it'll be a 40 power play that way. And so they do play death. And so they do steal that initiative away. Worst case scenario, we can do She-Hulk and Maximus, or we can do She-Hulk and Red Skull. Very, really big play. Red Skull will get the extra bonus from Washington, DC. As long as they don't have Spider-Man, I think we're in an okay spot here. The Doc Ock is not what we wanted to see though. Um, but the, uh, the Arnold Zola will destroy our Shuri, so we do still have one spot open, and we still have Shuri's ability because we haven't played a card. So it comes down to whatever we top deck here. Sometimes the heart of the card believes uh, we top deck into the best possible card we could, our Red Skull. We could have top decked into Taskmaster or some of our lesser cards, but we top deck into our Red Skull. That is going to be a 33 power play. Even if they have a Shang-Chi, that puts them at 26 and they wipe out our board, our Red Skull alone will be able to, <laughs> will be able to handle this for us. He's going to be able to handle our light work. Let's go ahead and lock in the Red Skull. We're going to steal away the win here. They do have the Shang-Chi but that is quite all right. We do have the massive resource of Red Skull coming down to steal the four cubes away. Victory. All right, next up we have Kaladin. The first location is Atlantis. So if we throw our Red Skull there, there our Taskmaster will be able to get the extra five power off of that Atlantis bonus, and we'll be able to get some increased upside from it. I didn't pay attention to what Yondu destroyed there, and I really, really should have. That's disappointing. We're going to go ahead and skip here. The Ebony Maw, we thought about playing in Machine World, but I don't think it's worth locking us out of a potential bad location. If this was Space Throne, then all we have would be the Atlantis lane to play in, and that's not great. So I am going to now play our Ebony Maw into Machine World. If they do have a Galactus and Null style deck, then that might not be great. But, ooh, so the Deadpool, they probably have a Killmonger somewhere in their list. We do get Sauron. Uh, it's a turn late. But I think that's okay. We'll be able to still do the Red Skull into a Taskmaster, Red Skull into an Arnold Zola. And, still, and it's still going to be a pretty powerful play. And it avoids the downside that we get from a Red Skull. But would we rather drop that versus something like a She-Hulk? I think She-Hulk is going to give us a little bit more flexibility here. I like using the new card. He's pretty flexible and pretty easy to want to drop. But I think in this case, I think in this scenario... Um, I don't think the negative ongoing effect of Red Skull, especially dropping him on four versus three, I don't think it outweighs the seven power that we're missing out of on our She-Hulk. So we are going to go ahead and play the Red Skull in Atlantis. That will push him to 20 power. If we want to, we could do a Taskmaster, or we could do Arnold Zola to push him into the other two lanes. They do extend the game with magic. So they could be going with a Galactus. No, they couldn't. Uh, they couldn't be going with a Galactus and a Null because they just filled up the rest of their spots. And so maybe they're wanting to go with something like a Null into an Arnold Zola, but then they still have the 50-50 flip here. So I'm not sure if it was just bad priority or what happened exactly. We can now actually do our Taskmaster into a next turn Arnold Zola to push that 15 power here and here and just really have a stacked Limbo and Kun Lun lane. And to do that, we're not gonna want to play zero here. Let's go ahead and lock in the Taskmaster. I think we're I think we're in a decent spot because any of their play lines. So, OK, the death is a pretty big one. The death is definitely a pretty big one, but we do have the massive 20 power that was in Kun Lun. We were going to come down with the Arnold Zola to push even more power here and here. And they just weren't able to have enough power or enough reach to counter those big, powerful resources with a Shang-Chi. And so let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. Ooh. Next up, we have Scary Terry. The first location is Xandar. We have our zero, and so we can actually do zero into Lizard into Sauron, which is actually a pretty decent play line. I like that idea. We're gonna be able to play on curve all the way up until at least turn three, and then we have quite a few, we have two four drops that we could potentially draw into, or we just skip and have a cheap She-Hulk. Uh, I like this, I like this play line. And we could do our Ebony Maw here, but that's susceptible to Killmonger plays. And since we do know that we're going to drop Sauron on three, I'm going to hold our Ebony Maw for now. That way we can use him potentially on that last turn as a kind of buffer, just in case we don't draw into our Red Skull or our Taskmaster or our Arnold Zola, something that we really want to push out onto the board. And so now this is a little bit interesting. 
So with Altar of Death coming up, and with the Monster Island being protected with armor, the only location we can do our Arnhem Zola is into Xandar. And that's if we draw into Arnhem Zola. It's not a guarantee that we draw into it, but if we do, then that would be the only way that we're going to be able to place power into the Altar of Death. And so I am going to play our Sauron, we're going to sacrifice him to the Altar of Death to get some additional energy this upcoming turn. They use a wave, and so they could be running a Galactus deck. Very, very common right now with this location, being able to freely ramp into those cards and resources is huge. We could skip this turn. Next turn, She-Hulk is going to be free because we have the six energy from this turn. Uh, then we could play our Red Skull and our She-Hulk, and that gives us a little bit of information about where they're going to be playing their cards. So they do a death into Xandar. So maybe they're running a Null. They're not running the Galactus version unless they're planning on playing Galactus into the Altar of Death. So let's go ahead and go with the Red Skull into Monster Island. We're going to go She-Hulk into Xandar. If we top deck into Arnhem Zola, we're going to go through the Arnhem Zola Casino in Xandar to try to push power into the Altar of Death. And so they lock down that lane, which is interesting. I don't know their play line. Uh, they do use a Shuri as well. And so they could do a really big last turn play. So can we. We have a 14 power Ebony Maw that we can play. Where do we want to play this monster? We have initiative, so I think I'm going to play it into Xandar. We might lose the Altar of Death. If they have a Professor X and something else, we... We might lose the altar of death and then it comes down to where they place their power so i am going to drop it this way and we'll see um actually thinking about it the amount that we're winning xandar by we probably should have invested more heavily over there uh but we do get the retreat here it was going to be a decent last turn play it was the finding the shuri on the last turn and having ebony maw in hand felt very very fortunate sometimes we're not going to have the big resources and we'll be able to make a sloppy play happen with shuri because 14 power on that last turn is much more decent than just dropping four. It even outpaces a lot of other six cost cards just by themselves. 